Hi folks. Today we're going to have a look at the digital input side of the verbal equipment and how it handles things, uh, how you can change mappings and do other stuff like that. We'll have a quick review first of our sort of input device types. Now we're specifically we're talking about digital here. So first basic type we have is a push button. So for example, in this picture of showing you here, you have your B1 to B8 buttons. They're all standard push buttons. It goes for exactly the same for these hat switches. They are indeed four way plus press, but they're standard push buttons. Uh, the other type of digital input device we have are the toggle switches. Now there's two types here. These three here are the three position type uh, as, as well as this one here. This is also a three position. And what that basically means is that the Toggle has a center position, which is no input sent to the well, the microcontroller on the uh, input device. Um, and it also has two other positions, a forward and a backward position, which correspond to two different button presses. The other type of toggle switch is a two position toggle switch, which basically means it has a forward and a back position. And each of those positions um, will send a an up or a down command it can never be just not pressing something um those are you can do some funky stuff with them actually i'll show you how to do that later on uh, and the other basic type is the standard rotary encoder uh rotary encoders work slightly differently than normal switches because there's two actual physical buttons wired to it and it uses some funky logic to work out which direction so there's a rotate left and rotate right on them also there is a push button function when you press down the top of the button those are the, the sort of the basic things. The other one we'll have here is our selector one, which you're not really going to talk about because frankly, not really interested in that today. Right, I've got to load up the software now. I've currently got it. Uh, I'm using an older version, by the way, from May. I don't like the newer versions. Don't ask me why. Um, and we have our throttle selected and we're on the button tab. Uh, the toggle expert mode off and on, you just click on the ready button there and that'll, that'll change it. So let's look at some basic concepts here. How the firmware handles input from whatever digital input devices, be they toggle switches or just push buttons, is handled by this mapping system here. And what it means is a physical or virtual button which you can create yourself the input is sent into the, the firmware and then the firmware looks up the button config and mapping table, which is this here, and then works out the mapping between the two items. And then when the button's pressed, it'll generally by default in normal mode, as you see here, it'll just send the button to Windows. So key concept. Physical device buttons are mapped to logical buttons, and those are the logical buttons you see getting transmitted to Windows. So if I pull up the joystick tester, hide these lower windows, don't need them. If I were to press, for example, uh, B1, which is physical button 40 here on my V1 for all, then what happens is button 40 goes active, and that's the physical setup here. This tester is the uh, logical buttons that windows will see and you can see button 22 lights up so that's basically what this mapping is mean, making it do basically says use this in normal mode when physical button 40 gets pressed transmit button 22 and you can see as i'm holding my finger on the button and take it off it goes out again and that's the first sort of that's the most basic config you've got on this. So it's just a direct mapping and it's in normal mode. So the, the button, button mapping table here uh, controls how the firmware interprets the physical button inputs that you give it and then does, does what it needs to do and sends it onto Windows. So if we just double click on this, uh, you might want to make sure that this is unticked because by default it will be ticked. Um, so if you click in and it is ticked, just hit cancel to go back out again after you've unticked it. So this is this is our um, our little mapping. So it says button 22 is physical button 40. Mode is normal. There's no shift state and there's no delay timer on it. 
and that's that's the most basic map that you can get now we're going to look at a different one here i'm going to look at the one that i've changed already and it's what's known as inverted so this all drop down here as all the different types i'm going to go through these one at a time so what i've done is i've configured button 23 as inverted now, button 23 uh, and my setup is B2. So right now, what is happening is it's not actually being physically pressed. So this is this is it here. If I press it, and you can see it goes active. I'll just reset this and this. But this, this is basically inverted, so it's the opposite. When I don't press this button down, it's going to send a command to Windows that logical button 23 is active. And when I do press it, it does the opposite. So inverted is the exact opposite of what a normal button press means. It means that whenever you press it, it releases it instead of actually pressing it. So that's the you know that's what inverted does. Okay, so next one we're going to look at is the switch configuration. That specifically would correspond to. T2 and T3 toggles on the verbal throttle. So button 31 is physical button 32. Okay, that's the map in here, and the mode operation is switch. Now, it's a little bit weird. I mean, I, I personally speaking don't use it in this configuration because it's a massive pain in the arse to deal with. So this is this is T2 and T sorry, T3. T3, it's in the back position. I push it forward. And if you notice here, the logical button 33 blinked. So in the forward position, it's 31. And in the rear position towards you, it's it's 30. So there you go, just toggle it off and on. But if you actually notice down here, I'm moving it forward and backward. So you can see yourself, it, it's going to be in one of two states. It can't be in neither state. What it's doing, it's triggering button 33. Now, you actually make that useful in software, specifically I fly DCS. You need to go in and edit Lua configuration files for um, whatever aircraft, for example, the KA-50 or something like that to actually get the kind of operation you want out of it, as in it, it actually knows if it's up or down based on the position. Um, I don't use it in that mode. I actually unmap it and use it in a different way. Um, which I will show you in a second. Right, let's have we look at the encoders. Uh, the encoders on the verbal equipment is basically a finite position rotating knob. So you can rotate it uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise and it will give out different inputs. Now, uh, the wiring on encoders, if you want to go and look it up online, um, basically there's two switches on the encoder dial, uh, switch one and switch two. Now, when switch one triggers and then switch two, two triggers after that, it knows it's going in one direction, and like, for example, clockwise. And when switch two triggers and then switch one, it knows it's going the opposite way. So that's how it works out the rotation. So I'm going to rotate E1. I'm going to do it clockwise. What's going to happen? You're going to see both these go active. See them flicking off and on, 64 and 65. Um, and that's because there are actually two switches wired to it, as well as the press on it, obviously. So if I rotate it, so right now I'm rotating clockwise, and it's triggering button presses on 49. So that's what Windows will see. Button 49 will press off and on and off and on. And then you can bind that to something in, for example, DCS. I've got this bound to rotate a, um, for the MI8, it's rotate the wee knob that controls the autopilot. Because it's a, like it's an analog little dial that's got like an infinite amount of position. So it matches very well with this. If I rotate it the other way around, so it's now going anti-clockwise, it's now triggering switch 48. Um, I've only, I've played around with a couple of different settings in the encoder. Um... The main one you want to maybe play around with is the delay timer, which is a one or a zero. Uh, don't mess with the shift states. And with that, it'll basically change the amount of press each time you do a click on, on the actual rotation. So it'll actually hold it on for a little longer for you. 
there are um and there is another operational mode in coder 24 i think that just gives you more steps per rotation but the 12 is good enough for me so i've never really needed to change it so like i say the encoders are there if you want to play around with the delay that will give you maybe a longer button press if you are trying to bind it in the game you're having problems go in there and try up in the delay and see if that helps you at all Right, let's have a closer look at the toggle switches. Now, the T2 and T3 toggle switches are the ones that only have two positions. It's either forward or backward. There's no in between. And there's a couple of different ways of configuring these. And if you've watched my other video, I configured it uh, using them as normal buttons. So right now on my current configuration, T3 is set to normal button mode. Now, that's going between physical button 30 and 31. And that is mapped to 33 and 59 logical. So there's me switching between them. That's in the back position. So that's 33. Logical is going to Windows. Put it forward, 59. Back and forward, back and forward. You can see that the button is actually active continually in whatever position it's in. Now, there is a different way of configuring this, which I have done with T2. And T2's current mode has been set to toggle on. So physical button 28 is mapped to 32 logical and the mode is toggle on. And 29 is mapped to 59 and it's also set the mode toggle on. And I'll show you what the difference is. Now with the other switch in, in normal mode as you have it, it's always holding a button and sending it to Windows. And in the other toggle on mode, what it means is that when I move it between the two positions, it like it's like a single instantaneous button press. And then it's released. That might be more useful to some configurations. It might lend itself to better configurations. So that is the, the toggle on mode. Uh, when you're actually doing, you know, when, when you're configuring it, you need to configure both states of the switch, both forward and backward, using that mode. The other one you can use is toggle off mode, which I'll cover now. Um, you're probably going to gather it's the exact opposite of toggle on. Get that. Back to the device. So this time round, it's going to trigger the button press on release when it leaves the state instead of when it's in it. So that is, it's basically inverted. You can see yourself, it's still doing the single instantaneous button press, but it's it's only changing it. So it basically just inverts the, you know, inverts the sides of it. Uh, only other thing you might want to do is you can play with the delay timer in this. Uh, I do think that the toggle on mode is a pretty pretty sweet configuration. It's probably more useful than the um, having these in normal mode. Because it is going to get it's going to give you a press when you move into that state. And then it's not going to keep it held down. So that's probably a slightly better way of doing it. So uh, there were some forum posts I noticed in the Verpal uh, support forum this week for people asking about detents and stuff. And there'd be some sort of um, method to handle it. Now, the detents were removed from the V2 throttle onward. Um, so you don't actually have like a physical stop that you can feel if you're, say, for example, you're in an F-18 or something like that, or uh, like an F-14 where you push the throttle so far forward. And then at a certain point, you get a, a little bit of resistance and that's you going into the afterburner zone, so to speak. Now, people were asking, would it be possible to simulate in software? And yes, you can actually do that. Um, there is a post on the Verbal site showing you how to do that. Now, the thing I'm going to get to now is... Um, 
you'll have to hold a button down to do that um which would kind of suck a bit so i'm going to show you one of the one of the last sort of configuration options you have here and it's called what's known as a soft toggle so i'm going to pick button b1 because it's nice and handy and know where it is so that's button 40. i'm going to go down set it to soft toggle and then save it back i'll show you what this means basically means it acts like a toggle switch so a click will set it on and hold it on and another click will remove it so if i press the button which is going to correspond to logical button 22 i've i've tapped that button once my finger is off it so it's holding down button 22 so this might be handy for you folks if you're wanting to do your um your sort of soft finger lift or detents to sort of move the throttle all the way forward so what would happen is in normal mode it restricts the throttle up to between say 10 and 90 percent even though it's physically all the way forward and when the toggle triggers it then gives it full range so it'll go to 100 percent and you get your afterburner and then you just press the button again and it toggles it off so you don't actually have to keep a button held down you could just tap it on tap it off it's all good so that's that's a soft toggle that might be helpful for some people okay one last thing before i go there are a couple of extra drop downs here uh in the list for the mode um coder 12 dbl and coder 24 dbl uh currently they don't do anything right now um there must be for a new feature coming that hasn't been implemented yet so there's no point setting them you can set them if you want and click save but they'll not stick if you ever try and save it back it won't do anything um i hope these videos help um i did them just basically because the verbal documentation was somewhat lacking and i thought i might as well experiment play with stuff and if i learned something i might as well share with others and hopefully you don't have to deal with the same headaches i did so i hope this helps you and uh please subscribe and have a nice day